Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sabansky. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them. And today we've got an absolutely ridiculous show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram. My handle is C-T-A-B-A-N-Z. Follow the channel. Instagram, same name as the channel, Dreamers Pro. And check out our podcast that we have pinned below. Let me get into this topic here. <clears throat> so yesterday, something interesting happened. I turned on my TV to watch ESPN first take. I can't remember the last time I did that. It was years ago. I usually watch ESPN for some clips online on YouTube. I don't actually sit down and watch the show. But for whatever reason, I tuned in and I saw uh, on the panel, it was Molly Karam, Tim Legler, uh, and Brian Windhorse, right? If you guys know anything about Brian Windhorse, he really made his name uh when he really started covering lebron before he got into the nba and he's been covering him ever since so that's kind of his claim to fame but also he's a journalist reporting all of that so they were talking about a bunch of different things and um what happened they were talking about jason tatum they were talking about the lakers i tuned off because i wasn't interested in those parts so i get back on the internet to kind of follow some of the stories of the day and then i see a clip of Brian Windhorse talking about Allen Iverson. So I unfortunately decided to click on this clip to hear Brian Windhorse give his position on Allen Iverson. Why? Because recently Allen Iverson went on the big podcast with Shaq and he was on there. They were talking about a bunch of different things. Uh, and Shaq asked Allen Iverson, how many points does he think he would average in today's NBA? And Allen Iverson essentially said, he said, well, the year I lost the scoring championship to Kobe Bryant, that season, let me pull it up. What year did Allen Iverson average 33? That year, he averaged, what year was that? Yes, in 2005, 2006, he averaged 33 points a game with 1.9 steals on 7.4 assists. Uh, 3.2 rebounds on 81% shooting from the free throw line, 32% from the three and 44.7% from the field. While I think he led the league in minutes that year with 43.1 minutes per game. So essentially what, what AI said was, he said, well, if I could average 33 then where teams actually play defense, if you put it in today's game, I could at least find another 10 points. And that, that was a conversation. So ESPN brought up Allen Iverson's comments and they were reacting to Allen Iverson's comments. And when it came time for Brian Windhorst to weigh in on Allen Iverson, he had one of the most ridiculous takes on AI that I have heard in a while. And that his takes were so bad that a litany of NBA players, well-known players actually went online and started basically telling him off over his ridiculous Allen Iverson takes. So for those of you who didn't hear what Brian Windhorst had to say, I want to play it for you now and then want to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. No, I don't think so. Look, I love AI, man. Nobody respects more what he did and what he accomplished at his size. Here's why. There's a couple reasons why he wouldn't get to that number. First of all, just we can't just start playing around with numbers like, you know, it's easy to get there. Uh, since Jordan's like two big years he had late 80s, it's been 35 years since then. Only two guys have even gotten to 35 in a year. Right? Kobe did it once. Harden did it once. Maybe Embiid could have done it potentially this year if he didn't get hurt. Um, so it's just a very difficult number just to get to 35, much less get to 40. And now you're talking to 43. That's, so that's the first reason. Secondly, the usage rate would not be allowed. You just wouldn't be allowed to do that because of the way that they view these players and what they're doing with them on an average night. The usage rate you'd have to have to get to 40 plus points per game. It just there's no way an organization would allow that to happen. And then finally, you need to incorporate the three-point shot to a greater degree. That wasn't really his strength. That's not what he wanted to do. He didn't take a lot of them, and he shot around 31% when he did take them. That would have to be a big part of your game to average those kind of numbers as a guard. That's not what the league looks like anymore, Winnie. That's not even what's considered a quality shot, a mid-range or a shot at the rim. Teams hunt three-point shots. That's what they do. So that didn't really necessarily jive with the way AI played, and I just don't think any team would have a guy out there. He averaged 41 minutes a game 11 times in his career for a season. Like, there's just no way. You're playing 35 minutes a night. You're not getting to that number. So I hear what he's saying. It sounds logical. The, the reality is that's just not going to happen. 
Before I get flamed by Iverson fans, I just want to say, of course, if AI was playing in his prime today, his game would be different, and, the de and he would take advantage of the defensive rules, although nobody got fouled in that era more than AI because he knew how to get fouled, and he might get to the line less. But before I say that, he obviously would not 100% be apples to apples. That said, if AI played today, he would be heavily criticized. He would be way more heavily criticized about his style of play than he was then because he was a low efficiency player. Now, at the time, the entire league was sort of more lower efficiency and the 76ers were built to have sort of four strong defensive minded guys who couldn't play offense around him and then give him the ball and let him go to work. It wasn't because it was a character flaw or anything like that. But if you go look at the way he played, he played a lot of minutes and just chucked a lot of shots. And if 41% of them went in, it was considered a good job. That would not fly in today's game. Uh, you look at Embiid. Embiid was averaging 35 points before he got hurt on 22 shots in, in 33 minutes. That's unbelievable. It's one of the greatest efficiency seasons of all time. The year that AI won the MVP, he averaged 26 shots for 31 points. Um, that shot just 41% from the field. I think actually 42% from the field. AI would not be afforded to have as much of a control of the offense in today's game if he didn't, if he wasn't a more efficient player. And I'm not saying he wouldn't be, maybe he would be. But AI, of, AI thrived in that era. In this era, he wouldn't be able to do that. And as you said, Legs, I don't think they'd give him the ball as much because if you only shot 42%, you wouldn't be allowed to take 26 shots a game. So you heard the comments from Brian Windhorst. Absolutely ridiculous, right? So let me go online. Let me show you the post. Let me go on Instagram and read uh, some of the responses from some NBA players. Here's what some of the players had to say. C Carmelo Anthony said, he said they will always find a way to discredit you and we're, as we're showing this to you. Uh, Shady McCoy says, shaking my head. If you can't do push-ups or sit-ups, you can't have an opinion on athletes on TV. Another person said, Matt Barnes said, shaking my head. These hot takes for attention are getting ridiculous. Another person said, Ross Strickland. Please understand the difference between basketball knowledge and entertainment. We are giving so much time to non-basketball people. AI would be AI in any era. Would he take as many shots? Maybe, maybe not. But all you have to do is look at his skill set and it's obvious what kind of impact he would have in today's game. It didn't stop there. Uh, Richard Hamilton. This has to be a joke. Please stop the buffoonery. AI would, would have been AI in any goddamn era. Hold that. It didn't stop there. Uh, Waiters. I think it's Dion Waiters. He says, shaking my head. AI would be unstoppable in today's game. Point blank, period. Matt Barnes chimed in again. Low efficiency because guys were playing defense. Sean Matrix, uh, Sean Matrix, Sean Marion, a uh, hero, cap. And it just kept on going on and on and on and on and on. Uh, on the comments that Brian Windhorst had to make on ESPN. Listen, um, that was a very, very bad take. The reason it was a bad take was because his his comments um, had no context and he were very superficial. What am I talking about? Let's go through the information again. Okay. Allen Iverson is a career 26.7 point per game score for his basketball career. Now, why is that impressive? Because Allen Iverson, when he played, he played in the more physical eras where Kobe and all of that, where pace was extremely slow. And I'll get to that in a second in terms of possessions. Allen Iverson was six foot, 165 pounds. Let me repeat it for you. Allen Iverson was six foot, 100 and 65 pounds scoring 33 points a game in that NBA where the possessions were lower, the average score per game was lower and the average three point shots per 
uh, per game were much, much lower because today teams are averaging around 34, 35 three-pointers a game. And, oh, by the way, there was less freedom of movement. And he still scored 33 a game. 33. And you're telling me and Brian Windhorst that Allen Iverson would come into this NBA today and he would not be able to dominate. Now, here's what we need to talk about. Allen Iverson, for all of his lack of efficiency, was able to drag a 76ers team that was comprised of Eric Snow, Dikembe Mutombo. There were no offensive players on that team. He was able to battle every single round against players that were much bigger than him. We're talking about Vince Carter, we're talking about Ray Allen's had one of the most amazing playoff runs in NBA history. Then gets to the NBA Finals to meet Shaq and Kobe's Lakers, who up until that point were undefeated in the finals. They had swept every single round. Hear me very well. AI gets to the finals. And in game one in L.A., because I believe the Lakers had home court advantage, if I'm not mistaken, Allen Iverson drops 48 in that game while being guarded by Kobe Bryant, a very young Kobe Bryant. Those are the people that Allen Iverson was being defended against, the Rick Foxes and all of these guys. And he still, he still scored 48 back then. And when AI went to the basket... They were actual rim protectors. You would meet Kevin Garnett. You would meet, uh, the, you had the Dikembe Matumbos of the world, although he was his team. You had the Marcus Cambys. You had the Shaqs. You had the Alonzo Mornings. You had the Tim Duncans. You had all of these guys. And every time AI went to the basket, they would body slam him. And he would get right back up and do it again. I know this because I saw him play. I saw him play. So Brian Windhorst talking about, oh, they would bench him and they would put him down on the say he shouldn't play because he's attempted to get too, too much efficiency. If Allen Iverson was scoring 33 points on 44, 45% shooting back then, I'm pretty sure his efficiency in terms of uh, 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 um, um, like the percentage per, per game, I'm sure that number will probably go up to 46, 47% in this NBA. This NBA, you wouldn't even be able to touch AI. Allen Iverson was cat quick, lightning quick, like quick, quick. He would demolish this NBA, totally demolish it. And the late, great Kobe Bryant had to say the following about Allen Iverson. He said, the, I, the entire NBA should feel lucky that Allen Iverson was never six foot six. That's what Kobe Bryant had to say about AI. He said, everybody should be thanking their lucky stars that Allen Iverson was not six foot six. AI was six feet dominating. You think Stephen Curry is special? Imagine Allen Iverson in this particular era. So you heard what the NBA players had to say. Almost all of them vehemently disagree with Brian Windhorst. I think that was a bad take. Um, it had no depth to his his his, uh, his 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 position, and it's one of the reasons why almost everyone is pushing back on. That was a ridiculous take. That was a ridiculous take. There are a lot of guys in the NBA that put up a lot of chucking up a lot of shots. It's not just about efficiency; it's also about impact. And people make a little bit too much out of this efficiency. There are a lot of guys that are efficient and ain't doing a damn thing. There are only really a few efficient players in the NBA if we really want to get into the efficiency. There aren't that many. I'm talking about guys that are efficient from everywhere on the floor. There are very, very few. Very. Maybe Devin Booker, for sure Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, uh, Kyrie Irving, a few other, when we're talking about efficient players, there aren't that many. Look at Don Chich is inefficient. Half of these other guys are not efficient players. Half of them. Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, those guys are efficient, but they ain't that many. This dude is acting like everybody in the NBA shooting at 50 percent, above 50 percent from the field, and they're not. So to me, man, that was a terrible take, and that's the reason why they roasted him. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, uh, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We we'll catch you on the next show. Peace.